Welcome to church. You're tuned into the Mount Zion experience. And what does that mean? That means you've just showed up to your appointment with destiny. And this month, we're talking about believing big. In every area, we believe that you're about to experience the best days of your life. You know, it's not by accident that you're watching today. As a matter of fact, I believe so much in what God is doing that I want you to invite somebody else to watch. Send a text to your group chat, click the share button, and let's stir up our faith together because we're doing what? We're believing big. I just want you to throw that in the chat real quick. I'm believing big. I'm believing big. There you go. And let's pray before we kick this service off because I believe that what God is gonna do in this service today is gonna transform our lives. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this Sunday. We thank you, Father, that you are ever increasing our faith. Father, we're believing big in our finances, believing big in our relationships, believing believing big in our businesses, believing big in everything that you have called us to do. So Father, establish yourself in our presence now, Father. Allow your glory to transcend through the airwaves and touch people wherever they may be. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory because as we believe, we know that you're going to perform and you're going to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. So Father, we give our trust to you. We give our heart to you and we expect it to be done. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. It's time for us to go into worship. I'm pumped all about it. Let's go into the service right now. Come on and clap your hands and give the name of Jesus the praise right now. We want to teach you a song today and it goes like this. Ooh, Jesus, I give you the glory. I give you the honor. I give you the
something about the name of Jesus. Jesus, we give you the glory. Jesus, we give you the honor. Jesus, we give you the praise. There is no name like your name. You have a name that's above every name. At your name, every knee shall bow according to your word, and every tongue shall confess that you are King of Kings, Lord of Lords. We lift our hands right now, God, just before we sing another song, and we reverence that name. I want somebody to know that's watching right now. At home, that as you call that name Jesus, you can get saved calling that name. You can get rescued calling that name. You can be healed. Right here in this service, right here on your computer, on your phone, lift your hands. Everybody all over there, just lift your hands right now. Call the name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's God who exalted him high, high, high above every problem, every situation. And has given him a name that's above every name. And we worship the name. As we move, we'll say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. What a wonder you are, Jesus, 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 what a wonder.
he's fighting for you. And there's nothing too hard for him. He's the the Lion of the Tribe of Judah. And no weapon that falls shall prosper. Because God Well, thank you so much for tuning in today. I am so grateful to have you connected. Let me tell you something. God is amazing. What a powerful worship experience. What a powerful time of intercession. And listen, we're in the month of March, and I'm grateful to God. Man, the second week of March, we're here, and God is doing great things. I want you to make sure you share this with as many people as you can. Share now on Facebook. Share this service because God's doing something crazy awesome in this series on Big. We are believing big, big stuff coming your way. And let me tell you, I want you to follow me. Follow me at Joseph Walker 3. Follow my wife uh, on uh, Instagram at Dr. Steph Walker. Follow me on Instagram. We appreciate you doing that. And also, I encourage you, uh, if you haven't gotten a copy of my new book, please do that. Trust me when I tell you, God's doing great things with this book, Leadership and Loneliness. Get it at josephwalker3.org or get your copy at Amazon. Now, you know what? We're in a crazy series. I mean, awesome series. People are talking about this this series on Revelation, are you being blessed? Are you being blessed? I want you to hear something. I'm going to be talking this Wednesday about Christ as judge. We're going to see chapters four and five live in front of us. I mean, I'm going to lay it all out of how he comes and in his righteousness, but also in his wrath. You don't want to miss that. And listen, every Thursday, and you know, we have virtual connect with the pastor and it's always a blessing. And that happens at nine o'clock central standard time in the PM uh, hour. I want you to come on virtual connect because we've given you a special invitation to make certain you come in virtual connect and you can ask questions about what we've taught as it relates to the book of Revelation. So go on our website, get that information, get that link, and I hope to see you this Thursday. We'll talk about what we talked about on Wednesday. It's going to be a blessing. And you know, one of the things I'm excited about last week, when I tell you Mount Zion has some amazing men, whoo, man, let me tell you, husband camp was amazing. We started out with husband camps talking to the men on Thursday. We had a real robust conversation. They took their significant others out on Friday night. And on Saturday, whoo, we had a great time as we just tied a bow around it. It was just so amazing. Let me tell you something. It's time for the wife camp. This week, I need you to sign up. Listen, whether you are married, want to be married, I don't care what your status is. If you are a woman, you want to learn what it means to be a wife, listen, myself, along with my very special guest, Dr. Stell, we're going to pour into you on this Thursday, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time to 8 o'clock. And then, of course, Friday, we're going to have a prayer with you at 7 in the morning for 10 minutes. And then Friday night, you get a chance to go and we're going to give you questions to ask your husband or your significant other. And then Saturday, boy, we're going to come back together from 10 to 12 and pour back into your life. And then we all come back together. You with your husband, 
you with your significant other on a Zoom on Sunday, next Sunday, five o'clock. And boy, overseer John Rams and his wife, they're gonna be sharing. They have a powerful book called Marriage and Money. He's a marriage expert. They're gonna be blessing us. Y'all, this is crazy, bananas, awesome. Want you to be a part of it. Make sure you have to register now. Go on our website, go on the app, register. It's free and get the link to the Zoom. You don't want to miss it. So I want you to be a part of all of what God is doing. Now, let me share this. You know, I shared last week and I want to share it again. Mount Zion is absolutely committed to making certain that we're on the front line of helping people understand the vaccination. And of course, we appreciate all of you that have been so supportive and certainly praying for us out here on the front lines. And, you know, I think The Bible says that we perish because of a lack of knowledge. And I thank God for my wife who's really been making certain that our communities uh, get this vaccine. We want to make sure that you get this vaccine. And let me tell you something. As I shared last week, I want to share it again. Make sure you get on text alert right here. Text alert. Text that number, Mount Zion. Make sure you do it because we're going to be sending out information on how you can get the vaccination. We have basically partnered with folks to make Mount Zion a vaccination location. So we want you to know when that text message comes forward, or you can head down to the Antioch location or wherever we tell you to go and get your vaccination. So we're committed to doing that. Make sure you do it. I promise you, it'll be a blessing in your life. I'm thankful to God for you. And let me tell you guys, I'm so grateful, you know, God has been so good to us. And when you think about how good God has been, I just want you to pause and just think about how God has kept you. You know what makes this Sunday so amazing? This Sunday represents one year. I want you to pause. One year from this Sunday is when we literally vacated the physical location for COVID-19. It has been an entire year. It is a one year anniversary. And man, we would have never imagined it had been a whole year. I mean, I thought maybe it'll be three months, six months, but it's been one year since you've been in this building, since I've seen some of you in person, but you have been so incredibly faithful and God has kept us and sustained us because we are bigger than a building. We are God's people. And Mount Zion, I love you so much. And when I tell you, God's got a word for your life today. We're continuing to think big, even in a pandemic. I want you to prepare your heart to remain faithful to God. When you continue to remain faithful to God, God will continue to remain faithful to you. If nothing else, you learn this pandemic, God is faithful and he's a keeper. Today, as you give your tithe, I want you to do that. We're a tithing congregation. Give your tithe 10% of how God has blessed you, your offering, so on division, right here. Here are the ways you can give. Make sure you text to give. If you don't text to give, make sure you mail it in to the Mount Zion Baptist Church, 7594 O'Hooker Boulevard, Whites Creek, Tennessee, care of our finance department. We appreciate you so much, all of you for giving. I'm praying blessings over your life now. Father, I thank you right now for tithers. I thank you for seed sowers, people who have been so faithful. It's been one year, but you have kept the Mount Zion Church because of their faithfulness. You have kept them because of their faithfulness to you. We give you glory and we will remain faithful because God, your word has been sown into our lives and we know our turnaround is closer than it's ever been before. We thank you now in Jesus' name, amen. Get ready for Husband and Wife Camp 2021, Reimagining Marriage, Mission, and Money. Wives, you'll join on March the 18th through the 20th with a special combined session on March 21st with Overseer and Lady Ramsey. Singles, don't feel left out. This is for you too, as you prepare to do life with the one God has for you. We look forward to seeing you at Husband and Wife Camp 2021. Mount Zion, join Bishop Joseph W. Walker III for a special eight-week series on the Revelation in the Book of Revelation. You don't want to miss this insightful and impactful series filled with biblical truths about the future of the world and the church in the end times. Tune in each Wednesday on Facebook Live or the Mount Zion app at 12 noon 
or 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Our text to give procedures have been enhanced too. Sending a text to 267 MTZ Seed will send an actual text message of your gift. First, start a new text message, sending it to 267 MTZ Seed. That's 267 689 7333. Then, type your giving keyword along with the amount. For example, to tie $20, type Tithes20 in the message box. Available giving keywords are Tithes, Offering, Vision, TV Partner, and Other. That's it. Giving is more simple and easy to manage. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. So God, we give you the highest praise. We thank you, Lord, that you rescued us. We thank you for your love. Anybody grateful that he rescued you? The song just says this right here.
but I'm never going back. I'm so thankful he rescued me. When I was sinking deep down in sin, far from the peace for sure. Anybody glad that his love lifted you, that he rescued you? Come on, just lift your hands right there and begin to worship him. If it's nothing but thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Oh, God, we give you glory. We give you honor. We bless your name. We praise you. Thank you, God, that you rescued us. Thank you for your love that never gave up on us. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody grateful for the love of Jesus? Anybody grateful for his unfailing love? Right, right, you will. Just open up your mouth and give him glory. Give him honor. Give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you for all you've done for us, Jesus. Thank you, honey. Well, let's get ready for the word of the Lord. Father, thank you for your word. I pray, God, for clarity and understanding as we continue to grow, as we continue to believe you for bigger. Lord, speak to us today. And God, let somebody's life be changed forever. We're ready to receive now. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to go over to 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and verse 10. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. I want you to think about this today, praying without limits. Praying without limits. Now, there are two areas in our lives that reflect the depth and the authenticity of our relationship with God. It is our faith and it is our prayer life. Our faith is in direct response to the application of God's word. 
I have God's word in my life. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. I apply that word. And as a consequence, my prayer lines up with my belief. Now, prayer is communicating with God, but also communing with God. It's not just talking to God and telling God what I want, but it's my willingness to abide in the very presence of God, to stay there for as long as it takes to receive what God wants to give to me, instruction, blessing, and to get my marching orders. It's very important that I not just communicate, but that I commune. Now, when your faith and your prayer life operate at optimal levels, it causes you to pray with audacity and assurance. You see, <laughs> our prayers are never limited to our current situation. Because when we pray like this, we are praying according to the revelation we just received in God's word. That's why you got to be careful, because the more revelation you get, the more audacious your prayers become. Some people look at you and wonder why you pray so big. It's because you were exposed to a word that keeps telling you what's available to God. I believe what God's word said. I believe I can do what it says I can do and be who it says I can be and have what it says I can have. You see, here's the deal. Too many of us, we have been timid with our prayer life. Some of us have been too careful with our faith. We haven't understood what it means to really believe big. But oh, in this season, God is sending this word to tell you, listen, child of God, it's your time to start believing big. It's your time to start praying big. You've got to believe for things that people think you are crazy to believe God for. Some of you are listening to me right now. You know God is not a respecter of persons. What he's done for others, he can do for you. Some of you right now got some stuff you're believing God for in your business, some stuff you're believing God for in your finances, some stuff you're believing God for in your health, in your ministry. Listen, I want you to know you have permission today to pray, Ooh, I want you to hear this, to pray beyond or without limitations. Now, I want you to hear this, child of God. This is the prayer of Jabez, and we, we've heard this prayer, and Jabez's story is very powerful, and I want to get right into it. We don't have much history about Jabez other than the Scripture gives us this, this verse that says that Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and he prayed to God and asked God to enlarge his territory we do know that Jabez was, the circumstances of his birth were somewhat problematic, and I want to share that with you today. And I want you to understand, though, that Jabez was one who had incredible integrity. He was more honorable than his brethren. Let's, re let's look at that. Let's really examine that, because you have to see the potential of an authentic person. You see, when you are an authentic person, you understand that there is something deeper and different about you, about how you view the world, how you treat people. Your integrity is at another level. And the fact that the scripture says that he is more honorable than his brothers, it is speaking to something much deeper, that God can trust him based on his integrity. You know, Psalm 8411 says, no good thing will he withhold from those who walk upright. So here's the deal. Jabez has distinguished himself and gives us some lessons to remember. What are they? Don't compromise your character. See, when you have character, it represents behavior on display. Behavior on display. Character cannot be compromised. You see, personality is like perfume. Character is how you really smell. A lot of people get caught up in personality. We think because people throw together theological phrases and they're very charismatic and they have a certain level of swagger that they have character. The fact is, character is what you do when nobody's watching. You see, character is never up for negotiation. Character produces an honorable life. And what the enemy wants to do is to dishonor you so it will discredit 
your relationship before God. There is a connection between your character and your prayer life. Your character and your prayer life. <laughs> we look at this even with our children. Your child comes to ask you for something, and the first thing you do is you make a character statement to them. Did you clean up your room? What you're saying is, did you do what you were supposed to do before you asked me for what you're asking me for? You see how this works? The parent understands that nothing is given to a child whose life does not line up with the rules and regulation of that parent. As a consequence, God says, when you are asking me for great things, does your life line up with what my word declares? You see, <laughs> what we're asking God for is often filtered through our capacity to handle it and to make God look good when we get it. Your character speaks volumes because God is not going to entrust something to someone who's going to embarrass him. So God can trust you with more. <laughs> Jabez is teaching us this. God really can trust you with more. Jabez is praying for something because his character says, God, you can trust me. <laughs> the critical question is this. How much can God do in your life without losing you. Let, let me talk to you. How much can God do in your life? Where can God take you? How high can God take you? How much can God bless you without losing you? Huh. I made it my mind, wherever God takes me, I'm taking God with me because I know that what I am, God made me. What I have, God gave me. What I know, God taught me. Where I am, God brought me. And, and, and child of God, listen, for some, the more we get, the less God gets. The more opportunity God gives us, the less time we have for God. When we didn't have a job, and we were, oh, Lord, I got nothing but time for you. Now God bless you with a job, and now you don't have time to stream in, don't have time to pray, don't have time to, Lord, I'm just so busy. God's like, you need me to make some room for you? You see, child of God, listen, when you are an authentic person, it shows up in your character because God can trust you because he knows the following. One, he knows your conviction, where you stand. Character says, it doesn't matter where you take me, God, my convictions are going to be clear. Where I stand, I stand on the word of God. I am not compromising. I'm not going to be wishy-washy. I am not compromising my morals and my integrity. God, wherever you take me, I'm going to be the same person I've always been, standing on your word. Those are my convictions. Secondly, my commitment. How long will I stand? My commitment says, Lord, I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to be consistent because the thing that gets so many people is your inconsistency. You've got to learn commitment is tied to consistency. Lord, you can always count on me. I'm going to always be a giver. I'm going to always show up. I'm going to always serve. I'm going to always be faithful to you because I understand, God, my responsibility. The more you bless me, the more committed I'm going to be. And then thirdly, my capacity, how much you can really stand. <laughs> How much can you handle? God, I'm asking you to, to do big in my life because I'm telling you, God, I can handle it. I can handle every single thing that comes with it. I have the capacity to deal with it. Don't ask God to take you to new levels and you can't handle it. You can't handle the criticism. You can't handle all the, all the pressure. You can't handle the schedule. You're making God look bad. God's like, look, I didn't raise you up to whine. I raised you up because you have the spiritual capacity and acumen to accomplish what you have asked me for. And so like Jabez, you have to push through the pain of your past. The Bible says something else about Jabez, and this is very interesting. His mother names him that because she birthed him in pain. His name is a symbol of pain, yet the pain does not prevent the promise from coming to fruition. See, there's some pain in all of our lives. Somebody watching me right now, there's so much pain in your life. Years of pain just accumulated over time. All of us have that, that narrative, but you cannot allow the pain to paralyze you from receiving what God wants you to receive in this season. 
If you become histrionic, you'll never escape the prison of your pain. Don't become incarcerated by what has occurred in your past. God is trying to give you something fresh and something new. And listen, yes, it happened. But God is getting there to do something so amazing in your future, it's going to outweigh everything that occurred in your past. All the pain, all the frustration, all the hurt. Listen, you have to accept the fact that you being here is a miracle. Would you just put that in the timeline? I'm a miracle. I mean, just being on this stream, watching this on television, I am a bona fide miracle. The fact that Jabez is alive is nothing short than a miracle. You got to learn to thank God for what matters now. There, there are so many things that could have prevented him from being born. <laughs> there are so many complications that could have contributed to his demise. <laughs> Yet, he is alive. And in the text, he pushes past his pain to make a request from God. When you think about what could have happened in your life, when you think about all the different things and circumstances that could have prevented you from sitting here watching me on this screen, you have to pause and give God glory that you are here that you are here. I thank God for a lot of stuff. I thank God for my house and I thank God for my automobile. I thank God for my, for my clothes and I thank God for my job. But I want to take a moment right now and give you about 15 seconds to just thank God wherever you are watching from the comfort of your home and your car on your job wherever you are now I want you just to look right now lift your hands and say Lord I thank you that I'm here I'm here it's a blessing to be alive it's a blessing to inhale and exhale and let everything that had breath praise the Lord could have been me, <laughs> outdoors, no food. Could have been me. So I thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. And let me tell you something. What you survived left you no excuse not to succeed. God didn't keep you alive for nothing. You didn't overcome what you overcame not to succeed. You didn't overcome that. All of that to just sit back and do nothing. That was about motivation. That, that was your motivation to start saying, Lord, I'm believing you for big stuff. I'm going after that big stuff now. Ooh. Boy, I feel this thing coming. It comes with the realization of understanding the stewardship associated with surviving. Your drive is associated with the fact that you survive. Showing up is associated with the fact that you survive. You wonder why some people stay motivated, why some people are so determined? It's because of what they have survived. He had pain, but he kept pushing. I'm talking to somebody right now who needs to keep pushing. I know, I know, I know you had some stuff you had to endure and overcome, but keep pushing, keep pushing. And I've learned to stop talking about people when they're praising God and when they're showing up and you never know their story. There are some people that have pushed through some stuff, but they're giving God glory in the midst of it. And let me tell you something. When you come to this point in your life, you understand like Jay Baz, the power of audacious prayer. <laughs> it's here he makes the request. His prayer is one of tremendous audacity. Enlarge my territory. Enlarge my territory. I'm no longer thinking small. I'm thinking big. Enlarge my territory. Say it with your mouth. Enlarge my territory. It's the kind of prayer that gives insight to how big your faith has to be. He's not asking God for something that could be achieved in the earth realm. He's asking God for something that far exceeds it. You've got to learn to pray beyond man's ability. 
There are some things you need that are beyond the resources and influences of man. There are some things you need only God can provide. And you got to be okay praying beyond man's ability. He is not requesting anything from humanity. He is seeking it from divinity because he knows that what he's asking for is beyond the ability of man. See, that's why you got to understand something. You pray, but you haven't prayed until you prayed this big. You haven't prayed until you pray without limits. Because now, when you pray without limits, you are praying beyond man's logic. You are praying to the point where man cannot understand or comprehend logically what you're really asking God for. There's some stuff you're believing God for is beyond the comprehension of man. It doesn't even make sense. It's not even logical for somebody like you from where you come from to ask God for something like that. It doesn't make sense for somebody who's had your credit score to ask God for that house. It doesn't make sense for somebody who has come out of prison to ask God for that, for the, to bless your business. But let me tell you something. When you pray beyond man's logic, it means I am praying without limitation. I'm also praying beyond man's limits because man is finite. And I recognize some, I'm never going to let people limit what God can do in my life. One of the things I've learned some years ago, stop letting people regulate what you can believe God for. People telling you what kind of car you can believe God for, what kind of house you can believe God for. But if you ask for that one, oh no, that's too much. Or if you ask for that, that's too much. No, stop regulating my blessing. I'm thinking big. I know what God promised me in my life. And listen, God, I want you to bless me to be a blessing and not a burden. Jabez said, Lord, when you bless me, <laughs> listen, don't let me cause harm. It's one thing to ask God for something big, but it's another thing to ask God to bless you to be a blessing. Because ultimately, the reason why God blesses us is that not, not that we become reservoirs of selfishness, but we must become channels of blessings. Lord, whatever you do in my life, let it flow through me to be a blessing to somebody else. I don't want to mishandle the blessing. Because there's so many folks who are irresponsible with the blessing that it has an adverse effect when they get blessed. They don't understand what, what occurs when you don't handle the blessing properly. He's saying, Lord, don't let me be a hindrance. Don't let me be a hindrance. Don't let me get in the way of somebody knowing you with my blessing. Let me use my blessing that people come to know you and not run away from you. God, please, don't let me cause harm. Don't let me be a manipulator and a conniver and use power and influence to abuse people. Lord, don't let me be that person. And Lord, please don't. Take your hand off of me. Don't remove your hand. God, right now, I need your hand upon my life. Lord, whatever you do, don't take your hand off of me. I'm talking to somebody right now. That's what you ought to say. Lord, listen, even if you got to whip me, just don't take your hand off of me. Let me talk to you. I'm going to leave this with you. The Bible says something so powerful. Jabez puts this prayer in perspective. And you know what occurs God does something that you should praise him for. Praise God because he awards our petition. <laughs> he awards our petition. Did you hear that? Child of God, the final thing I want you to hear right now is God is so gracious that God granted Jabez what he requested. When you got faith, and you got a prayer life for big things, big things, <laughs> you realize something is happening in your life. The moment I release that kind of prayer, something is happening in my life. I'm talking to somebody now who needs to know something is happening in your life. And let me tell you something, just in case you were a little concerned, Big things don't bother God. Woo! Often we're so hesitant about asking God for big stuff for fear that it's going to be viewed negatively. You know, I don't know if I should ask God for all that. I mean, so many other people need so much. And God, I don't know about it. Let me tell you something. Your God is a God who has cattle on a thousand hills. Whatever you can dream about, you got to know it doesn't intimidate God. Stop 
demonizing people for having big dreams just because you got little dreams. Stop looking and hating on people because they're believing God and praying for bigger stuff. Let me tell you something. You got to know when you ask God for big stuff, it's because you know you serve a big God. He's a Red Sea opening, taking the heat out of the fire, lion taming, Goliath whooping, walking on the water, raising Lazarus, raising a dead Jesus on Easter Sunday morning God. So what do you have that's greater than what God has already done. Ain't nothing you can bring to God that's that big that is going to intimidate God. So go ahead on and ask God for the big stuff. I'm asking God for the big stuff. I'm believing God for everything his word said I can have. Listen, believe big and pray without limits. And I need you to understand something. I want to release this prophetic word over this house today. I want to release it under the anointing of God because some of you have come into this month, you've embraced this series, you have been believing big, you have released it out of your mouth, and the Lord says to you, believe it's already done. I said believe it is already done. That's why when we pray, we pray with faith knowing that it's already done because the Bible says that God granted him what he requested. God granted him what he requested. When you pray without limits, you got to have the faith to believe that nothing is going to prevent it from coming to pass. It may take a little while, but I'm here to tell you, it will never be denied because I need somebody to know that what you prayed for is already done. Abraham asked for it and God did it. Moses asked for it and God did it. Hannah asked for it and God did it. Hezekiah asked for it and God did it. Mary asked for it and God did it. Jairus asked for it. God did it. The one with the issue of blood asked for it, and God did it. Somebody watching me right now can be a witness of some things you asked for, and you've seen God do it. And if God did it before, he can do it again. I need you to feel that timeline right now with one word, done. I need you to declare it in the name of Jesus. It is done. I'm done believing God for small stuff. I'm believing that the big stuff I'm believing God for is already done. You go head on and pray for the parcel of land. I'm praying for the neighborhood. I'm praying for the dealership. I'm praying for debt free. I'm praying that God will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all I can ask and I can think. I release an anointing of big stuff over your life. I believe some of you, uh, God's going to do so much big stuff. He's going to cancel debt. Some of you're going to be writing six figure, seven figure time checks. God's going to be bringing stuff into your life that's going to blow your mind. Get ready because it is already time. When you pray, believe it's already done. Lift your hands. I want you to do, do this right now. Lift your hands where you are now. Close your eyes. Right now, don't watch me. Lift your hands. I want you to get in your spirit that thing that you're believing God for. Now listen, here it is. Watch this. Now God says, wait a minute. You know you want something bigger. Take it up. Get in your spirit that thing you've been saying, God, can I ask you for that? Yes. Yes. You drove by it one day and said, you know what? <laughs> God showed it to you in a dream. You're like, whoa, it's a business or it's, it's something. Get it in your spirit now. And I want you to know you are under an anointing in this ministry. We celebrate big. We don't walk around with smallism because smallism is a spirit. People that think small want you to have small. But you know what I want you to do now? Get it in your spirit. And I want you to let go and I want you to let God, and I want you to know right now that thing 
is already done. Come on, just begin right now. Just say, Lord, I thank you. Soon as I stop <laughs> worrying, worrying how the story ends, I let go and I let God, let God have his way. That's when things start happening. When I Stop looking at back then I let go I let God Let God have his way Soon as I stop worrying <laughs> Worrying how the story is I God have his way That's when things start happening When I stop looking back back then I let go and I let God Let God have his way Listen to me Now is your time to let go and let God. You need a relationship with Jesus Christ? Let go. Let God. Let go of the little. Embrace the big. He wants a relationship with you. I want you right now, I want you to email us at salvation at mtzionnashville.org. Do it now. We love wherever you are around the world. This is your chance to say, I'm tired of being around small thinking people. I need to be connected to something that's thinking at a whole nother level because that's big stuff. You have to understand something. There's a powerful law I want to tell you about. It's called, and this is going to bless you. It's a leadership principle. It's called the law of the lid. You can only go as high as you're covering. <laughs> and I want you to know something. In this ministry, we take the lid off because we'll never limit what God wants to do in your life. We're going to celebrate all the extraordinary things because we believe there's an anointing that flows in this house that takes you to whole, a whole nother stratosphere. But you got to get right with God. If you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added unto you. Thank God for you today. Hope to hear from you, and we thank God for you worshiping with us today. I pray you've been blessed, and I hope that you will Make sure you connect with me. Let me know if this message has blessed you. Joseph Walker 3 on Instagram. Please do that. Let me know. I would love to connect with you. So, Joseph Walker 3, DM me. Let me know. Bishop, I was watching. I can't wait. I want to repost it. I appreciate all of you. And don't forget all the announcements we've shared. We love you. We thank God for you. And women, I cannot wait. It's this week. I want to see you at Wife Camp, whether you're single, whether you are married. Believe God for something big, for your family, for your future. I promise it's going to be a blessing. May God bless you. May God keep you. That's our prayer. Until next time, be blessed.